Hello, honor to be here as part of this uh, interesting project called Vet Talks to speak with you about One Health and antibiotic use. My name is Lucas Pantaleon. I'm a veterinarian. Uh, I'm originally from Argentina. I was uh, raised in a small town in the Pampas, close to its capital city, Buenos Aires. I have been living in the United States, in Kentucky, for the past almost 20 years, where I practice veterinary medicine as a large animal internist and currently after doing an MBA I have my own consultancy company from uh, where, where I work with companies and individuals talking and uh, teaching about antibiotic stewardship, One Health, infection prevention and biosecurity practices. I wanted to bring bring up a few points during I, our conversation today. The main uh, point that I want to bring up is to for us to understand what One Health is. What really is this concept about? Secondly, I would hope that you understand a little bit what antibiotic resistance is and ultimately what we can do as veterinarians and a lot of you future veterinarians do about this problem that we're having with antibiotics. One Health. So this concept is a concept that talks about collaborative work between different disciplines at a local, national, and global level to bring health to animals, humans, and the environment. If you think about One Health at this, as this umbrella concept that involves many different disciplines from human, animal, environmental health, looking at individual health, all the way to population health and into ecosystem health, you can have a grasp of how broad and multidisciplinary this concept is. Today, within this concept, we are going to be talking about antimicrobial, antibiotic, more specific resistance, and some of the interventions that we can put in place in order to try to limit the emergence of antibiotic resistance. When you think about One Health, then, think about this concept of multidisciplinary work to bring together people to tackle complex problems such as what we'll be talking about today, antimicrobial resistance. Some of you will go into clinical practice and as clinical practitioners, our main focus is to provide the best care to our patients that we can. In order to do that, antibiotics are one of the tools that we have in order to treat patients that have a, an infection a bacterial infection that requires the use of antibiotics. However, antibiotics are a finite resource and they must be used responsible. Others will go or are currently in production animal practice where here the partnership between the veterinarian and the producer is key to produce healthy, nutritious foods for the consumer. As veterinarians, we are in charge to maintain health and welfare of animals in production systems. And antibiotics 
are one of the tools that we have that we can use and must use responsibly when animals are sick. How is or what is antibiotic resistance? We need to understand that the ability of a bacteria to develop resistance to antibiotics is really a natural process and bacteria has has this type of ability and genes even way before antibiotics were developed but basically what happened is with the increased use and missed use of antibiotics this problem of antibacterial and bacterial resistance to antibiotic has worsened so basically what happens is when you administer an antibiotic bacteria that is susceptible to it dies and the bacteria that is not susceptible to it could proliferate and overgrow the good bacterial population and sometimes cause side effects such as uh, disease secondary to overgrowth of bacterial resistance. How does bacteria fight antibiotics? And they have different mechanisms. One of them is the production of enzymes that destroyed some antibiotics or classes of antibiotics. For example, beta-lactamases, which are enzymes that destroyed beta-lactam antibiotics. When bacteria acquire resistance, it is interesting to know that this resistance could as well be transferred to other bacteria. Therefore, bacterial resistance is transferable. Antimicrobial resistance is today one of the biggest public health challenges. And antimicrobial resistance does not see international borders, therefore is a global one health issue. Today it's been estimated that approximately 700,000 people around the world are sickened by an antimicrobial resistant microorganism. If we don't do our part as veterinarians in conjunction with um, human doctors in order to change this trend, it's been estimated that by 2050, approximately 10 million people could be affected by antimicrobial resistant bacteria costing approximately a hundred million a hundred trillion sorry uh, dollars to the world economy and currently antibiotic resistant bacteria and hospital acquire infections are a huge challenge straining healthcare resources across the world. There is an increase in emergence of antibiotic resistant bacteria in veterinary medicine as well, such as this example of a skin infection secondary to a Staphylococcus aureus pseudo-intermediates, for which a survey performed by the AVMA in the United States revealed that 82% of veterinarians are concerned about the increased incidence of anti antibiotic resistant bacteria in clinical practice. And we all should be concerned because the increase of antibiotic resistant infection increases the cost of care and decreases or lower or worsens outcomes. In animal agriculture, especially in the uh, developed world, we have done uh, 
huge progress in improving the use of antibiotics in this setting. Specifically, in the United States and in Europe, antibiotics as growth promoters have been banned. However, in lower income countries, antibiotics are used over the counter so they are easily, easily accessed and sometimes they are used in order to make up for the lack of sanitation and biosecurity, which is something that we all need to work together and changing. As you can see, antimicrobial and antibiotic resistance is a complex issue. It is an issue by which we need to look at it with a One Health lens and coming together from multiple disciplines to tackle it and try to reverse its trend. Many countries around the world are recognizing the issue with antibiotic resistance and are creating national antibiotic action plans. What can we do as veterinarians when antibiotics are used or to limit its use? Well, top of mind, it should be prevention and disease prevention. Containment, when we see an animal that has an antibiotic resistant bacteria, we should contain it. Therefore, try to limit for that microorganism to spread to other animals or humans. And when we need to use an antibiotic proper use with stewardship practices, must be implemented. When we think about disease prevention, it is key that we participate and help our clients and producers develop strong vaccination plans, have in place biosecurity and infection prevention protocols, and assure that the animals under our care are healthy overall. For example, providing proper nutrition to those animals. If we do these things properly, disease prevalence will decrease. Therefore, the need for antibiotics will be less. We can also do seemingly simple things such as hand washing because this has been shown to decrease the spread of antibiotic resistant microorganisms and having practice surveillance systems by which we can monitor animals or animal and assess earlier if this animal is sick therefore try to treat animals more at an individual basis. Regarding containment, if you have an animal in a hospital like this horse that develops a salmonella diarrhea, it is important to contain this animal in order for that disease and microorganism not to spread to other animals and potentially humans. But when we need to use an antibiotic, stewardship is important. And I like this definition about stewardship because it talks about the importance of preserving this finite resource, have proper oversight and use it responsibly because it is a role that we as veterinarians play in safeguarding animal public and environmental health. Using antibiotics judiciously means that we need to think about alternatives as well. And when we use an antibiotic, we need to question ourselves, 
do we really need to use that antibiotic? Is it being used in the proper way? Are there alternatives to it? If used and if available, evidence-based decisions based on guidelines should be followed. And also monitor the outcome of those animals being treated with an antibiotic. Educating our clients and producers is important. And for example, these type of uh, posters that could be placed in our clinic if we are in a small animal practice, talking about the fact that not every upper respiratory disease in companion animals need to be treated with an antibiotic will help to educate clients about when antibiotics should be used and the importance of using antibiotics responsibly. These are some examples of the guidelines that have been published for a few clinical conditions in companion animals that as veterinarians and future veterinarians, you guys should be familiar with when you go into practice and have to make the decision if to treat an animal with an antibiotic. So to finish up, I want you to keep in mind a few concepts. As we talk about this one health concept, I believe is very important. I think antibiotic anti resistance is a one health concept and a one health problem. Therefore, we need to work on these in a multidisciplinary way. We need to engage with medical doctors and environmental uh, people in order to try to resolve and reverse the increasing trend of antibiotic resistance. What can we do as veterinarians to fight back on antibiotic resistance? Well, as we talked about prevention, right? Vaccination, if we have to use uh, an antibiotic, use it responsibly, thinking about stewardship, having proper infection prevention and biosecurity practices in place and help your clients and producers implement some of these practices. Continuously learning and educating our clients and producers about this evolving problem is key. Surveillance in order to try to detect disease early and sanitation and use safe food and water is important, especially in lower income countries. And ultimately regulations and some of the regulations that are being put in place to help with antibiotic resistance. So it is our responsibility as veterinarians to work on these and use antibiotics responsible because antibiotic resistance is a real problem and if we don't do our part, this is going to spread like wildfire. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have enjoyed 